Hello, I'm Otto Kekäläinen and I am the person responsible for the Debian packaging of MariaDB and related software. And I'm responsible for the version of MariaDB currently available from Debian and Ubuntu distributions. Today I'm going to tell you what happens after a new upstream release is out and before it becomes available for users in Debian and Ubuntu to install or upgrade to. There is quite a lot of quality assurance going on and I hope that the users of Debian and Ubuntu would appreciate all the vetting of new releases that is done on their behalf. And I'm sure quality assurance in Debian is also interesting for MariaDB developers as a source of information that can be used to improve the MariaDB server itself. I will publish these slides on Twitter during this talk. So if you're interested in Debian and MariaDB, please follow me on Twitter. So first of all, why is Debian relevant? Debian and, and Ubuntu are among the most popular Linux distributions and there are probably millions of users who start their journey with MariaDB by running apt install MariaDB server. The relation of Debian and Ubuntu is that Ubuntu is downstream of Debian and builds upon everything that is in Debian while adding many customizations and some components of its own. Ubuntu has also its own release cycle and support periods that are independent from Debian. For MariaDB this means that new versions of MariaDB go first into Debian and from there they automatically flow to Ubuntu. So what's the state of MariaDB currently in Debian and Ubuntu? The current Debian stable release Buster was shipped with MariaDB 10.3. The next Debian release Bullseye will be shipped with 10.5. That will happen sometime in 2021, probably in April or May. Galera 3 is in Buster and Galera 4 will be available in Bullseye. Galera 4 is actually already available in Buster backports and Stretch backports. 10.5 might become available officially via the backport system as well in the future, but you can naturally install it for any distribution version from the mariadb.org repositories as well. The Oracle MySQL version has not been available in official Debian releases since Debian Jesse. It does exist in the Debian unstable, unstable archive, sort of considered unfit for release permanently, and thus it will not be included in any stable releases of Debian. The version of Oracle MySQL in unstable was 5.7 for a long time. And since last fall, version 8.0 has entered Debian Unstable. There is also a meta package MySQL defaults that dictates what is the provider of MySQL compatible database. And in Debian, the release team decided to default to MariaDB and only MariaDB, while Ubuntu defaults to Oracle MySQL, but MariaDB is also available there, for users can choose in Ubuntu. So here's a timeline of MariaDB and MySQL releases and how they relate to Debian releases. As you can see, Debian 8, codename Jesse, shipped both MariaDB and MySQL. And from Debian 9, codename Stretch onwards, the official Debian release has only included MariaDB. Also note that as MariaDB releases are almost annual and thus more frequent than the Debian releases, uh, we have the situation that users of current stable Debian will skip 10.4 and jump directly from 10.3 to 10.5 when the upgrade from Debian 10 codename Buster to Debian 11 codename Bullseye will happen. If you want to check out the state of each package and their respective versions. You can at any given time go to packages 
debian.org or packages.ubuntu.com and look up the package MariaDB server to see what version is in what release. All right, next we look how the Debian packaging process actually works and what happens after a new upstream release is available. So first of all, Debian packaging is done in a separate Git repository at salsa.debian.org, which is a GitLab instance Debian uses. This is completely public and you can check it out yourself. In Debian there's a tool called uScan that automatically checks for new upstream releases and if one is available it can automatically download the new upstream source package and import that into the packaging repository in a single commit that represents the new upstream version. Note that in Debian all the packaging work goes into the Debian directory and the surrounding code is kept in a pristine state. Also note that in Debian there's an extra revision number that comes on top of the upstream version string. This is useful as Debian revision number will grow each time a new Debian release is made and bug fixes and patches improve upon the same upstream version. And uh, for software to get from the Debian packaging repository into the actual Debian archive, a Debian developer needs to upload it. There are about a thousand Debian developers in the world currently and only they have the power to do uploads. So contributing to the Debian packaging repository is open for anybody, but changes to go into a Debian, a Debian developer needs to approve and upload it. And for MariaDB, Galera and other related packages, the Debian developer is me. So this picture is probably too small for you to see, but you can check out my slides afterwards and the details of this image. But the main point here is to illustrate that uh, in Debian, all new software and upgrades to existing software go into the Debian unstable archive first. Once the package has been in the unstable for a while without anybody filing severe bugs against it, and all the quality assurance systems yield green light for it, the package migrates to the Debian testing archive. Then about every second year the testing archive enters a so-called freeze period and then only bug fixes for existing software is accepted. And once deemed fit for a release, a new stable release is announced from that frozen testing. And then after that the unstable and testing cycle will then continue to roll again until a new freeze and a new stable is about to be made. There's also a release flow outside the unstable testing cycle and that are the urgent security releases which can go directly into a stable release. There are also so-called stable updates as a channel for less time sensitive security updates and important bug fixes. But those uh, stable updates are quite limited and keeping stable stable is a holy principle for Debian release managers and they really don't want to take risks about it. Security updates are also the only case when we do direct uploads to the Debian archives, uh, sorry, Ubuntu archives. Normally we do the everything goes to Ubuntu first. From a quality assurance perspective the security releases are challenging as it bypasses most of the usual quality assurance processes but uh, we still manage it because in Debian we keep a small delay to allow some time for basic quality assurance to happen and there's actually been several cases where we've delayed making a security release for a couple of days and then in upstream they've noticed that the new security release broke something and then we've just passed that one and took the second security release soon after that. Uh, now Debian is notoriously known for being quite strict on many things and it's based on the Debian policy. 
Linux distributions and systems administrators love stability and standards. And the Debian policy exists to ensure a minimal quality for all packages in Debian. In addition, there's also a lot of guidelines and other documentation you need to follow. Some of these policies about, are about decisions done in Debian, but I would argue that most of it is pretty generic software quality requirements. And following the Debian policy for any given software usually means that the quality will improve. And it's less about having to follow some random conventions. Although there are a couple of Debian specific conventions in there as well. And in fact, the process to become a Debian developer consists mostly of that you need to prove that you know the policy and that you're able to consistently follow the policy for several years in your Debian packaging work so that you can become a Debian developer with uploading rights. The Debian policy is something humans are expected to follow and to support it there are also quite a lot of automatic quality assurance. All of the quality assurance systems in Debian are public and we encourage people to check them out. There are many things to be found regarding software quality that is useful and applicable also in the upstream project as well. Uh, here are some links of the overview pages and if you follow me on Twitter you'll see the link to the slides now and can open these links yourself. Here's a screenshot of the packaging overview for a maintainer. In Debian there is a MySQL team that covers both MySQL and MerDB and related software. I won't go into the details here, this is just to illustrate how it looks like. Here you can see the tracker page for MerDB 10.5 in Debian. Here are listed things like what versions of this uh, is where, uh, what binary packages are built from this source package, when was which source package uploaded to Debian, what is the status of the package, can it migrate from testing to unstable, are there some serious issues detected, how many bugs does it have and so on. This is basically a kind of portal with a lot of links leading to other pages with more information about the quality of this package in Debian and there's also some links to the package status views in Ubuntu as well. So let's have a look at the quality assurance systems themselves and the first thing here is the build system overview. This is the first step that runs after a new source package has been uploaded. Debian has currently 10 official architectures that the stable release will be available for and in addition 13 unofficial architectures. Currently MerDB builds and passes the basic test suite for almost all of them and what you're seeing here is a better state than what any previous version of MerDB or MySQL has ever had even though it's not fully perfect yet but uh, really for such a big piece of software being fully perfect on all architecture is probably not a feasible goal. And there's also a second build system, the reproducible build system. So this is a quality assurance system to ensure that if you make two builds of the same source code, the resulting binaries should be identical bit by bit. Having reproducible builds is important in being able to secure the supply chain of open source software. If somebody would inject backdoors into the binaries, then they would risk being detected as the binary file hashes would start to deviate from what others who have built the binaries independently see. So naturally such a supply chain security does not exist for closed source software as there you can hide whatever backdoor at any time and nobody can verify anything. But in open source you can actually do this so we should definitely make sure that our software can be built in a reproducible manner to support this security mechanism. Currently the MariaDB server itself does build reproducibly, but the RocksDB and Moonga plugins don't, 
And if any of you know this topic and want to help, I would be very glad to see this finally fixed. This reproducible builds website has a tool called Diffoscope that shows exactly what differs in the built files from build to build. And fixing it is just a matter of tracking down what source code line produced those files and those changes in them. Debian also has its own continuous integration system and it's based on the auto package test scripts. This is not the upstream test suite but a custom one for Debian. And if you want to check it how it check out how it looks like for MyDB, see the Debian slash tests directory. This CI runs for every upload of a new source package, like you would expect. And in addition, it also runs every time a dependency of the package updates, updates, which is very useful in detecting if a particular update of a dependency breaks the software it, that depends on it. So in this screenshot, you can see how the MariaDB 10.5 tracker page looked like recently after an, a new upload of MariaDB 10.5 because it triggered a lot of auto package tests in all the software that depends on MariaDB. This is something that is almost not done at all at upstream and very important source of information about MariaDB's compatibility with previous versions of itself and to some degree also a verification that it's still a drop-in replacement for Oracle MySQL in practical use cases. Ubuntu has this exact same system which runs the same auto package test. The only difference is that it tracks the packages that land in Ubuntu archives instead of the Debian archives. This way Ubuntu ensures that everything included in their own archives is kept in a working state. Next up is PillParts. This is a system that tests installs, upgrades, removals, and in general the package lifecycle. This does not that much run the binaries in the packages, but focuses on verifying that the Debian maintainer scripts work as intended, that packages upgrade, and that, for example, that a package is installed and uninstalled, it, would, it behaves correctly and doesn't leave any craft behind. Then there's Lintian. This is a very extensive tool that contains thousands of small tests ranging from checking for typical spelling errors in source code to checking that the symbols of built shared libraries are exposed and versioned correctly. This is tailored in particular to check that packages follow the Debian policy, but many of these things it can detect are about general software quality like the examples I just mentioned. Uh, packages in Debian strive to be so-called Lintian clean, which is quite feasible, since most of the things Lintian can easily detect are also very easy to fix. MariaDB is not yet Lintian clean, but it could be if all of my pull requests at various upstreams, such as MariaDB, RocksDB and Galera and others, would be merged and included in their respective next releases. In addition to Debian's standard quality assurance systems, we also have some MariaDB specific testing going on. On Debian's GitLab instance, we use the GitLab CI features to run testing on every commit to the MariaDB, Galera and other packaging repositories. This version of GitLab CI that includes the standard Debian quality assurance is called Salsa CI. And we have extended it to also run several MariaDB specific tests, such as testing upgrades from pretty much all previous versions of MariaDB and MySQL. We build test binaries against the MariaDB connector C to verify that the libraries work. And uh, we test running encrypted TLS connections to verify that all the software that's needed there is interoperable and many other things. This is fully public, so you can follow the links in the slides and learn about the details. 
We also have the users in Debian who are contributing their share of quality assurance by filing high-quality bug reports. The Debian bug reporting systems are funny in the sense that they are quite hard to use, which has its downsides, but the upside is that if somebody does file a bug report, then they are usually quite well researched and actionable, and many bug reports even include patches to fix the issue, which is pretty nice from a maintainer's point of view. Here you can see the statistics of MerDB 10.5 in Debian, and it's pretty stable. We haven't had any new bugs for a couple of weeks now, and I think it's mostly attributed to the Salsa CI tests, which weed out most of the upstream regressions before the software lands in the hands of users. Ubuntu has its own bug reporting system, launchpad.net, and unlike the Debian one, this is graphical and easy to use, maybe a bit too easy to use, and most of the bugs filed here are just closed as invalid and won't fix. Although we need to keep an eye on this as well as an additional source for user reported information. So, uh, I showed you there can be multiple Debian revisions of each upstream version, and there are quite a lot of fixes done in Debian that are uploaded into Debian and verified there. And we do our best to not diverge from upstream, and therefore all improvements that have proven themselves in Debian are eventually submitted upstream, most notably to MerDB itself, but also upstreams of upstreams like RocksDB and Marunga. Here are a couple of examples to illustrate this. This way all users in any Linux distribution will benefit from the quality assurance work done in Debian. As you now hopefully have learned, there is quite a lot of work being done in Debian. It's not just about packaging MerDB, but actually quite a lot of release engineering and quality assurance to ensure that what lands in the systems running Debian will install, upgrade and run smoothly for years and years. Uh, also note that it's not just about working with the latest major release of MerDB, but we always have in parallel the older versions in maintenance as they are steep, shipped in stable releases. If you're using yourself MerDB in Debian or Ubuntu, I re recommend you start contributing to the package maintenance effort so you can, on your own part, ensure everything will run smoothly in the future as well. You don't have to be a developer to contribute. You can also greatly help by triaging bug reports or enriching the bug reports so that the issues are pinpointed and easier to fix. If you have packaging improvements as code, you can send them as merge requests on salsa.debian.org. And naturally, if your contribution is useful for MerDB in general, then I recommend you submit them directly upstream. Whatever you want to contribute with, the recommended first step is to join the packaging team mailing list in Debian and announce yourself there so we can start working together. Feel free to reach out also on social media and as I said, the link to my slides is already available on Twitter. So, see you there!